Hey guys and girls, this is Anish from GainMediaLab.com. Welcome to my exciting world of live audio mixing. In today's video, I talk about whether or not you can use EQ presets for your live sound work. And we will take a listen at three different kick drums and apply these EQ presets to them and listen to the results. But before we get into all that, make sure that you have smashed that subscribe button and turned on all notifications so that you don't miss any of the audio deliciousness that are streamed to you through these videos every Monday on my channel. With all that said and done, let's just start the show. Let's talk about the setup over here. I have three different tracks of kick drums. The first one you have heard me use before. It is the track that I have recorded with my neighbor and colleague Jure Dolis uh, for a lockdown project session, uh, an Easy Lover cover that was made uh, a couple of months ago. And we recorded that uh, at his house. The second is going to be a recording, a live recording from a band called Sedata that I work for regularly. Um, this is from one of the electric shows. And the third one is another Sedata show. This time it's going to be an acoustic show that uses a different kick drum. The first two kick drums are similar in size. They are both 22 inch diameter kick drums, while the third one is a bit smaller, a bit more compact with 20 inches in diameter. They have all been recorded with the same microphone. I'm using Shaw Beta 91. It has been placed inside of the kick drums and um, they have been also recorded with the same console and the same preamp. So this has all been taken care of. Let's just jump into the recordings. I will first give you a taste of each raw track so you can sort of have an idea how these kicks differ in their sound. And then I will start working on the first one uh, doing all my magic with EQ, compression, gating and all of that goodness. And then transferring those settings from the first one to the remaining two kick drums. Trying to figure out if these actually work or whether or not you have to start from scratch to get good results. Let me just run the tracks for you and we will take a listen at the three kick drums. The first one is um, the 22 inch uh, by Yura Dolis Atama kick drum. No processing applied. The same holds true for the second kick drum. And for the third one. All these kick drums have been level matched, so they are hitting the console at about the same uh, value. And uh, what I want to do now is just sort of unmute the first one and uh, apply some EQ, apply some dynamics processing, and see whether or not I can transfer these settings to the rest of uh, to the rest of the kick drums. Okay, so let's start with EQ. This is the sort of low end honkiness that I'm trying to get rid of. And then I'm hearing something at around 1K. 1.7. Okay, I can live with that. So it's just cleaned up a bit. Let's apply some compression. Okay. Out. Just getting a bit of the attack out, a bit more punch from the kick drum. 
and now I can hear all that sort of ringing and sustain and snare. Let me see if I can apply some gating to get rid of that. So I'm not getting rid of everything, I'm just reducing the level of the neighboring snare and Okay, let's listen to the track without all processing engaged. I'll say that's a good starting point. I'm not going into all of the details, um, dialing it in. Um, but I'll transfer um, all of these settings, all of the channel settings, um, to, to the next channel. And there we go. Paste. Enter the next channel. And then just sort of compare the what happens with processing and without processing on that particular channel as well. So the second one, let's just remind ourselves how, ourselves how it uh, sounds. Um, so we will start without any processing and then I will turn on uh, every element of the processing. So EQ first, compression second, gate third, and then disengage everything so you can hear the difference. Again, without, with. Okay, so let's talk about this one. Um, for me, it, it's it's doing something, but it's not doing exactly what I would want it to do because I can still hear a lot of that uh, upper mid range around 1K still bleeding through that I want it to get rid of. Uh, the compression sort of works, but the gating definitely does not work on this particular one. Um, so let's try and dial it in and see whether or not we can improve on it. I will start with adjusting the EQ from scratch and see whether or not uh, we can make it sound a bit better. Reset everything. Yeah, let's get rid of that. This is what I've been talking about, that, uh, that nasal thing. There's still something out here that doesn't sit well with me.
the gates. Okay, let's compare without. With. I think it sounds better if we go through, um, if we go through, you know, details and uh, settings for every uh, track um, on its own without just you know blindly setting but I don't mind uh, the compression settings they work sort of well uh, the gate settings it was mo mainly a problem with threshold settings so it I guess it's, it just depends on the way uh, the drummer is hitting the drum and also depends on how much uh, external noise and bleed you have um, in that particular track. Also, the tempo of the track can sometimes uh, give you a lot of the information on how you have to use the gates, right? Okay, let's do this for the third one um, as well. So we're going to listen to the raw track on its own and then we'll apply the settings that we have made on the first kick drum to see whether or not it works uh, just by applying that EQ and compression preset. Okay, I'm adding EQ. and gate okay right off the bat um, I would say that like these presets would be fine as a starting point. Um, they work way better in my opinion than they did on the previous uh, kick drum. Um, and I would be happy if I had this as a starting point when the show starts. Um, I would definitely add a bit more low end because it's a smaller drum. I just want a bit more um, oomph fullness on the bottom end. So. Maybe a bit lower than that. But even if we apply the same settings and the same EQ and the same compression, there's still a lot of difference between these kicks, right? So. This last one you can hear has been padded quite a bit, while the first one is much more open in terms of um, how the heads resonate. And that becomes apparent if I turn off the gate. You can hear the kick drum resonating much more. The last one we basically lose the noise around the kick drum but the kick drum itself is not losing any of its resonance now this one is basically the outlier right
Okay, so what does this exercise actually show us? It shows us that, in my opinion, we can use EQ or channel presets if you want as great starting points uh, for our live sound work. And that's why engineers from all over the world encourage you to make your own presets to um, sort of speed up your work, make your even presets for entire sessions, entire drum kits, entire uh, rigs and bands and vocalists and whatever. And you can apply them to certain channels, but don't just, you know, set and forget. Don't just recall them and say, this is going to work on every uh, type of instrument, every type of microphone, even if we are using the same microphone on practically the same source, that doesn't mean that it will work right off the bat. You still have to go in and tweak a lot, a lot of the settings if you want to get the best results possible. But as a great starting point, um, you know, these presets can be a lifesaver, can really reduce the amount of work that you have. I don't recommend using, however, the presets that have been made by manufacturers of consoles or whatever, because you want to make sure that you know exactly what that preset contains. You want to know uh, where the filters uh, are set frequency wise, what their widths are. You want to know how the compression works. You want to know how the gating works. You want to know the details of every channel preset. So if you have to go back and tweak something because you know that you know something is not working or you can hear that something is not working, then you know exactly what to reach for and what knob to turn um, and where to fix it. If you are working with somebody else's preset, that might not be the case or you might uh, find yourself looking for some things in places uh, that don't really influence your sound that much. I hope this was an interesting exercise for you guys and I hope you go out and try uh, this on your own. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you use EQ presets or channel presets for your live sound work, if you make your own and how does that work for you. That was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, make sure that you like, subscribe and share and uh, check out GameMediaLab.com for more audio deliciousness. Mix great shows. Take care. Bye.